If the emerging collusion between government and corporation, gigantic corporation, continues in the manner that it is continuing, there won't be anything that you do that can't be used against you and will be used against you in very short order. And the concerns that are expressed here about the local consequences of that, let's say with regards to January 6th, seem to me to fail to take into account the much broader threat that lurks underneath that everyone should be attending to. We are, we're in danger of eliminating the private sphere entirely. That's already happening in places around the world, particularly in China, which is why I made reference to that. That technology is at hand, and it appears as though both giant governments and giant corporations are use, utilizing it in every way that they can manage. And it's generally, it's often motivated by the claim that that's forestalling an immediate proximal threat. Right? Well, that's a short-term justification for engaging in a tremendous long-term danger. And it should be perceived as dangerous to those on the left who are politically committed, because it will be the politically committed who are first identified by such systems. The entire transcript of an interview that I did with Joe Rogan was submitted as evidence with regards to the unacceptability of my views. What I was doing primarily in that interview that was criticized was questioning the validity of the economic models of economic collapse that were stacked upon the unstable models detailing out climate change 100 years into the future. Well, you know, I talked to some people who went to these Davos conferences a while back uh, and who stopped going because of the twist that it took. And I said, well, I asked them, very credible people, by the way, I asked them, well, who is Klaus Schwab anyways? And the answer was, well, he's a conference organizer. I said, well, well, how did he develop such a position of undue influence? And they said, well, he was very good at bringing, um, what would you say, influential people together and helping them network. And that elevated them into a position of, well, unparalleled authority in some sense. It's like, yeah, fine, but we're going to sacrifice our national sovereignty to this international cabal of misinformed, what would you call it? Ut misinformed, low resolution Utopians. Utopians, Utopians who are willing to sacrifice the world's poor. That's the plan. That seems like a really bad plan. So now people who are listening to this, especially critics of the way that you're thinking, are going to say, well, there's Dr. Lewis getting all conspiratorial. And, uh, you know, isn't that just typical of a social conservative type? So you talked about the danger of ESGs, and everyone listening should know what those are. ESG, that's worse than diversity, inclusivity, and equity, by the way, by a large margin. And so there's the ESG problem, there's the digital ID problem, there's the globalist utopian centralizing problem. Why shouldn't you just be dismissed as a socially conservative conspiracy theorist? What makes you think... And I, this is really a serious question, you know, because the world's pretty weird right now. And it's not that easy to protect yourself against becoming conspiratorial, let's say, um, or seeing conspiracies. What makes you think that your analysis of this situation is is balanced and reasonable and that Canadians could rely on you for your judicious wisdom? Well, you've earned a PhD, so you know the grit and the rigor that it goes through, to, that you go through to, to earn a PhD. So I respect knowledge. Uh, any information that I put out there, I, it's well-researched. I often, if I'm quoting somebody, it's from their own words. The problem is, is that the, the term conspiracy theory has been used to, in order to absolve politicians of their responsibility to answer questions. It is, it, it, mm -hmm. it's a psychop term that, that's being used to gaslight. Um, even right now, the United Nations has a program that they put out on conspiracy theories, on how to deal with a conspiracy theory. What they tell you is that if you see something that you don't agree with, that you believe is a conspiracy theory, report the person, write to their editor. This is all a form of bullying. Um, mm -hmm. Labeling something as a conspiracy theory is an easy way for you not to deal with the issue at hand by just dismissing it. Me, someone with a PhD, I respect knowledge and I have taken a, a lot of time to write to the members of the Conservative Party and everything I write, I document it. At one point when I was telling people that our government 
in, enrolled in a program called the Known Traveler Digital ID Program, which is a World Economic Forum program, people said, no, that cannot be. Why would our government in, enroll in the Known Traveler Digital ID Program with the World Economic Forum? When I sent them the link and they can go directly to, Can uh, to the government of Canada's website, they could see that we actually have done these things. So many things, what the government does is that they, they put people in a place of willful blindness to make them feel that embarrassed somehow for actually listening to the things that they tell them that they're going to do. I'm a very educated person and, and I do not care if somebody labels me a conspiracy theorist because it just means that they're not intelligent enough to argue with me. That's all it means. And so I, do, I really don't care. My goal is I'm going to save my country. I'm going to do everything that I can to save my country. I'm going to invest every single ounce of my skill set to making sure that I remain a Canadian citizen and not a global citizen. And I am going to in continue to inform people so there's no shame. You can call me anything you want. I'm going to continue to speak. I'm going to continue to get my message out there. <laughs>